Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Jean-Marc Lima, and joining me today is Seamus Doon, Managing Director for Interaction Ireland, part of Global Data Center Operator Digital Realty. Seamus, thank you so much for joining us. How have you been doing um, over the last 12 months? Well, it's been a, an interesting 12 months with the lockdown. Uh, here in Ireland, it's been, like most other places, it's been a pretty strict lockdown. So uh, a lot of looking after the staff, but a Similarly, you saw from the quarterly results from some big hyperscalers, business has been extremely strong. Um, so there's been a lot of growth and we've been quite busy. And uh, luckily, we've managed to keep up and running, no downtime uh, while we're expanding a lot. So it's it's been a tough year for, for everybody, but uh, for us, there's been a lot of growth and we've been extremely busy. Hmm. And we need a lot more growth coming the next <laughs> few months and years. Uh, but just to give you a bit of background, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got involved with the data center world um, and what does Interaction Ireland, I mean, I think most people will know what it does, but it just gives us a beautiful review of, uh, of the business. Yeah, yeah I, that's, that's a great question from my point of view. I've, I'm coming up on my second anniversary here uh, with Interaction, a digital realty company. Um, Prior to this, I, I was a vice president and general manager based in Houston, Texas for a business in Hewlett Packard Enterprise. So very strong enterprise IT background, uh, you know, at a global scale. I lived in the United States and uh, you know, traveled, did business in 170 countries. The reason I joined this company, um, specifically Interaction in Europe, was uh, I could see where, where things were going, uh, not just the transition to cloud computing, but the whole transformation of uh, IT, IT infrastructure, and uh, you know what it meant for business, and uh, you know co-location data centers with connectivity-rich uh, a pl- a platform, um, with uh, you know on ramps to big public cloud service providers and SaaS providers was was the future of IT, mm-hmm. and uh, I think we're just in the middle, probably at the early stage of uh, a big trans- transition. Um, the cloud has been, uh, transition to the cloud has been a trend in IT, but I think you're going to see a level of digital transformation in the next five to 10 years that uh, will, will, will rival what we've seen for the, the previous 10. And that, that's why I joined this company. In Ireland, uh, specifically, uh, well, uh, Digital Realty uh, acquired Interaction, and it's now one of the biggest uh, data center collocation and connectivity businesses in in the world, um, operating you know a- across six continents, and um, there's been a lot of integration work between digital realty and interaction, you know, in Europe. But particularly for us in Ireland, uh, it's been quite a it's 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 really changed for the better. Particularly an inbound foreign direct investment style economy like we have in in, in Ireland, uh, you know, being acquired by a U.S. company with such a strong brand in the United States. Um, you know, has been a bit of a game changer and it's given us also a scale, um, you know, that we didn't have previously. So I spend a lot of time with my, my colleagues in the United States uh, working on our, our business here in Ireland and integrating the two organizations. Well, you said a lot of things that, that I would like to pick up and we will dissect yeah. your answer. Um, I mean, starting with the industry itself, what you said is quite interesting that we are kind of in the middle of this transition now in the next five, 10 years is going to be, is going to transform the way we do things and the way business operates and how much we have to serve the market with. Um, I would say the data center industry in Europe probably really started booming um, in the early 2010s. Um, so I guess we are halfway the journey now. So the consolidation and now we're going into the expansion phase. Um, but focusing on Ireland, um, I mean, Ireland is one of the most active markets in Europe, um, if not, well, probably top three most active at the moment, um, which makes it one of the most active in the world. Yeah. How do you describe the current market in Ireland, um, especially around Dublin, but even just beyond Dublin as well? Because this is the second topic that everyone is talking about. It's Ireland is not just Dublin anymore. Um, there's Galway. There's all the other places. Um, tell us. I mean, I'm not going to carry on adding your words to my question. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you know, Ireland is an interesting place. It's obviously relatively small in terms of uh, population, um, but it's uh, it's a bridge uh, economy. Like there are some others, you know, like. Singapore perhaps has similarities in, in, in Asia Pac, but it's different here. Ireland's a member of the European Union, um, you know, one of the biggest markets in the world and a very committed member of that. 
Ireland's the youngest population in Europe, uh, significantly the youngest, very high portions of, of education and a lot of strong cultural links uh, with the United States. Um, so very much a bridge between Europe and the United States historically. So there's a lot of, it's, it's a good and easy place to do business. And it's a strategy that's been worked on by successive administrations here in Ireland to be an easy place to do business and an attractive place to locate, locate and headquarter uh, your, your European base. Um, and that's, that's a couple of decades old. So some of the biggest names in you know, the tech industry particularly, but also the pharma and med tech industry have located their European HQs in, 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 uh, in Ireland. Um, and as you mentioned, different, uh, different cities around the, the, the country you know, pharmaceuticals and med tech is very clustered around the South. Uh, you know, medical device manufacturing in the West. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of the bigger uh, new tech industries, more in Dublin, but actually Apple, for example, have a big presence in, in, in uh, the South and Cork. So uh, quite, quite dispersed. So, that, you know, that's how the economy works. And, uh, you know, with, with not just the tech industry, but also the pharma industry, has been a quite a significant amount of growth mm-hmm. from uh, foreign direct investment through this year. In fact, you'd have seen an article uh, not too long ago in the, the Wall Street Journal, you know, citing that Ireland, in fact, was one of the few uh, Western economies that actually grew <laughs> last year. Ironically, even though the local economy suffered like everybody else, you know, with, uh, with lockdowns and uh, you know, the consumer-based economy, but the growth in both pharma and med tech and, and, and technology, as you've seen from recent quarterly announcements, um, you know, has created, uh, you know, quite a growth level uh, here. So that's driven the economy uh, in Ireland a lot. I mean, uh, uh, sorry, carry on. Yeah, I, I, I was going to address you, how that specifically translates into, you know, the data center business, as you said, is quite active. Um, uh, Dublin is, is one of... I, perhaps the biggest uh, data center footprint uh, of any metro in Europe, ironically, even though Frankfurt, London, Amsterdam and Paris are, are, are huge, you know, the so-called flap. Um, the difference in Ireland probably is there's a lot of hyperscale cloud service provider businesses who actually build their own capacity a lot more than they would do in other locations, you know. Mm-hmm. They've, uh, they, they, you know, a lot of cloud service providers, the big guys, uh, you know, they launched their, their cloud services business, uh, you know, when you think about it, 10 years or so ago, and they did that out of Dublin, probably Dublin and Amsterdam was how they launched into Europe, um, you know, after the United States. So, you know, they, they had a lot of competence to build their own capacity. So that's, that's probably 70% of the market uh, in Dublin, and that's, that's probably the core driver. It's interesting how it's evolving over, over the years. Uh, you know, the, the next tier down, SaaS providers particularly, they're creating a lot of the growth as well. And now more and more, uh, you know, Asian uh, companies, uh, you know, from China, but not just China, are entering uh, a Europe and creating some of the scale that the, the US tech companies did, you know, for the last uh, t- 10 years. So capacity is huge uh, and, and uh, only expanding. In fact, COVID probably dro- drove growth uh, and accelerated it probably more than it, it would have done if, if this had never happened. Um, so yeah, that's it's quite dynamic here at the moment. Yeah, I mean, I find Ireland quite fascinating because I've been following that markets, the specific markets quite close um, over the years, especially since 2016. Um, and I mean, you guys came out of the financial crisis in 2018, you managed to rebuild the economy and you almost became a digital Celtic tiger um, of your previous issues. So, I mean, I think you guys done amazing in that sense. But one resource that people often talk about as a caveat when it comes to building IT infrastructure is power. Um, people say Ireland doesn't have enough power. We've seen that um, your national grid and the government are now getting more involved in building more. But what do you have to tell people they still bring up the conversation around power? Um, you know, l- l- listen, there'd be plenty of power if if the, the, there wasn't such a commitment in the country to mm. sustainability and, you know, what's, what's actually been happening here over the last number of years is a commitment to get uh, to sustainable energy and renewable energy. Um, in fact, the target that's been announced by 
the, the government. Uh, and right now, the Green Party are part of a coalition in the government. So that's helping to, to drive and accelerate the commitment is to get to 70 percent of the grid power to be from uh, renewable energy, particularly wind. Um, you know, there's there's a there, 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 there's more wind energy than a country will ever need. Uh, but the target is to get to 70 percent. So there's a lot of infrastructure. The, what's, what's happening uh, now is a lot of his, the historic power came from you know, heavy fossil fuels, which was oil, peat, coal, um, and those power plants are being decommissioned uh, as we speak. There's, there's been quite a number of announcements here about decommissioning uh, you know, heavy fossil fuel uh, 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 generators, generating stations, and um, there's a transition. But in the transition, um, there's there's pressure on the grid, um, you know, right at a time when growth is needed, you know, across the the whole economy, but certainly in the, the data center business. Um, and the transition is to move towards, uh, you know, uh, gas generation as an interim solution until the, the grid can be upgraded to take the capacity for the investments in, in wind energy, both, both onshore, but more and more offshore Sure, wind, and there's a consultation process going on at the moment from the uh, the, the, the 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 grid management company Airgrid um, with the government. There's a, I think six weeks or so left of consultation uh, to make decisions. But but the targets to get the 70 percent renewable energy, and in the meantime, uh, you know, transition from heavy fossil fuels to gas to to, to bridge that the capacity needs. So. The, the growth's still going to happen. It's just in a different way, all driven by you know getting to you know more renewable energy uh, on the grid. Well, it's just quite an exciting transformation um, happening even outside the data center, but then going to come into the data center. Um, yes. Yeah. And speaking of facilities, and correct me if I'm mistaken, you've got six facilities at the moment in service in and out of Dublin. Um, what other expansion plans have you got? Are you going to be expanding on your, any of these buildings? Are you going to be building data center number seven, eight, nine, ten? Um, are you going to go out of Dublin? Are we going to see an interaction data center in Cork, for example? Uh, I, I have no announcements to make about, uh, <laughs> you know, we look at everything, uh, yeah. as you can imagine. Um, we've actually got uh, 11 uh, data centers. Uh, actually, okay. 11 data centers right now in, 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 uh, in Dublin. And uh, we have some pretty significant deployments in them. And uh, we've decided that we're going to, you know, expand that capacity and footprint as well. The, the demand is there from some of our bigger clients. And then um, in actual fact, the integration, uh, the, the acquisition of digital realty, uh, the acquisition from digital realty of interaction has created uh, significantly more demand with our presence in the United States. So, uh, you know, helping to, you know, contract uh, more business. So yes, we we will we will be you know adding uh, significantly more capacity uh, you know to our, our our presence here in Dublin. We've no announcements about you know moving outside of Dublin, but we'll always examine it. I, I one of the the key things that's going on is investment in the submarine cable uh, mm. capacity uh, into Ireland. Uh, there's been a couple of uh, big announcements with AEC two. Uh, landing in the West Coast. Um, you know, we're, we're going to hear some more stuff uh, about investment in capacity from subsea cable networks. You know, we're talking with, you know, all of our partners, and including GTT, who will make an announcement pretty soon, you know, on their plans and, um, you know, and others, you know, we, we, we contract with, with them all. So huge subsea cable networks, particularly between the United States and Ireland and into Europe. And, you um, and, and, and so, yeah, I mean, demand is just going to go. The, the local demand has stagnated, I have to say. Uh, you know, so a lot of the growth in the past 12 months has been from, you know, large uh, U.S. HQ companies in, in Ireland for Europe, European capacity. Uh, local demand has kind of stalled a little bit and enterprise, you know, non-tech uh, uh, demand has, has paused, let's say. And we're starting to see projects now picking up. Um, that we so we expect that market to to begin to increase in the second half of this year and into 22. Um, it probably wasn't a bad thing for us. It gave us some breathing space uh, to, to be honest, but uh, expect you know the multiple segments in the market to to begin growing. Uh, yeah. You know, in the second half of the year and next year. Would you say that its stagnation was sort of uh, it was a direct impact of the pandemic or just because of the? Um... Yes, 
uh, uh, yeah, no doubt. Um, a, a number of projects were put on hold. Okay. You know, IT transformation projects and businesses. Um, you know, you could not being able to travel. You know, the whole switch to remote working. You know, whereas that created some demand, particularly network capacity and cloud services. It also created a pause for um, you know some IT projects that were planned, the tra transformation project pr products, expansion product projects. Uh, but, but in actual fact, ironically, even though it created a pause, um, it also proved the necessity for IT transformation and digital transformation in general. You know, it's more important than ever, and that's realized. So we expect, you know, this pause, you know, the, the pause button that was pressed to, you know, come on stuck, and actually we're going to see more acceleration in uh, digital transformation type projects right across the enterprise segment uh, of business. So and they'll go faster. Um, I, I, I don't think anybody doubts, uh, you know, the need for a, an understanding that every business is a digital business. There's nobody, there's nobody that doesn't require digital technology to run their business. And then when you take some of the other mega trends around IoT, the implementation of 5G, um, you know, cloud migration, these things are all just going to accelerate uh, the need for, for those projects to happen, you know, even though it's sort of paused for the last 12 months. Yeah, and I mean, and there's no way back. Once you go digital, you can't go back, and if you're not digital, you can't exist. Almost. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you need to out of the bottle, and uh, yeah, I, I, you know, that I, I, the other thing is, the mm -hmm. network and the need for speed got the biggest test it's ever gotten in the last twelve mm -hmm. months. You consider the speed that loads of businesses, including ours, uh, suddenly switched to remote working and running our businesses in, in remote ways, requiring us to do these interviews. I can remember 18 months ago, you were here in Dublin. We, we, mm. we were able to talk face to face, but look at us now. Um, but the network has passed this test. You know, the, yeah, it's the done very well. passed a huge test. And uh, it, 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 in a way, it was an experiment that, uh, you know, was proven. You can go faster and you should. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the networks is one thing that we have to give that to operators that they've worked out brilliantly um, over the last year because you haven't really heard any stories of massive outages and downtimes or anything. Um, there was the odd one here and there in slower speeds, but nothing, um, they brought everything to a standstill. So, I mean, I can only imagine if this was happening without us having digital, um, I think you'll see unemployment rates and things would have been a lot worse than they are. It would have been devastating, yeah. It could have been a lot worse, yeah. So, you know, yeah. it's proven itself very well. And I... I to be fair to, you know, some of the announcements recently from, you know, Amazon Web Services or Microsoft and Azure and from Apple, I mean, the, the demand has really increased and we, you know, mm. no surprise there, but it's, it's the, you know, they've been successful and things have accelerated and mm. it's not a slow. Yeah. And the other thing to this is like everything that we're living through, it kind of was going to happen anyway. Your petition is going to take us 10 years to get to this stage. We kind of just advanced 10 years in the, in the space of 12 months. Uh, yes. but I mean, the network coped, so you can only imagine like, do we really need to wait 10 years to, to evolve to something else? Um, but this, this is it. So, you, you know, there, there's no excuse to wait around anymore. Mm. The, the need to do it is there. It's not a risk. It's a risk not to do it. It's yeah. a risk to go slow. Um, mm. So, so that's compelling. The other thing I'd say is it, the, the, the need for digital transformation is a global need. We're finding that, um, you know, in our business, having a global presence hmm. is most of the big enterprises. When we, we take a focus on the top two to 5,000 accounts or businesses in, in the world, they need global partners for, for most of what they do. You know, you can't do one thing in, in Ireland and a different thing in Germany or the United States or Japan, you know, you, you need a, a global platform. That's why we've doubled down on investing in platform digital, for example. And, uh, you know, you get a consistency of not just co-location services, but connectivity and implementing on, on a platform that's consistent globally. And that, that's going to be very well understood a, a lot more now because of this acceleration. Yeah. I mean, you got to be global locally nowadays. So even if you're a coffee shop, you're on the internet, you're global. Um, <laughs> but uh, but just to give us a quick glimpse into expansion plans, not just in Ireland now, but across Europe, um, what's interaction and digital reality preparing, uh, let's say, the next 12 months? Because I'm sure you have a lot of construction going on uh, on the back of all this as well. It, it's, it's very exciting. So let me, uh, I, I, I speak with 
my counterparts in, in Spain, um, in Switzerland, in Copenhagen, in Vienna. Uh, the, the, one of them said uh, in the next three years, he will, he will grow and expand more than he did in the previous 10. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what we're seeing with not just the, the so Frankfurt, London, Am, London, Amsterdam and Paris. They're huge growth areas, but, but now spreading more across, across Europe. That capacity has been driven from everything we were just saying before. We've also made some acquisitions. So, uh, you know, and, and growth, uh, our, our presence now is in Croatia and Greece. And you'll see it a lot more also in Africa. And, um, you know, you, you're going to see a bit more of that. And, and you know, as, they, as those locations join the global platform, with a lot more growth will be cre- cre- created. It's not just in central locations, but, uh, you know, in, in, in most of the cities. The other thing we're seeing is, uh, you know, data traffic is exploding. Obviously, the growth of data is exploding. So Marseille, for example, is a, is a huge growth area uh, because it's, it's, it's where a lot of submarine cable systems are landing from Asia, from the Middle East, also from Africa. Um, you know, that's similar is happening in Portugal and Spain and the Iberian Peninsula. That's creating growth. You know, as as we're also seeing in uh, in Ireland and uh, you know places like Copenhagen, so uh, that that that's data traffic and data gravity. Actually, as we we'll talk about it, where that data is existing, is driving growth in our business and and uh, in the digital economy in general. So hmm. it's it's yeah, it's it's there's a there, there, it's not going to slow. It's going one way. Um, so we need to get ahead. Well, there's there's a lot going on, and I mean, you mentioned some locations there that um. I could go on and on and on now for hours <laughs> talking yeah. about them, especially the Iberian Peninsula. But um, Seamus, if people would like to learn more about the business and your next announcements and what's coming and keep up to date with everything, uh, where can our viewers go to um, and register their interest? Well, in, in Europe, uh, we're, we're branded as Interaction, a digital realty company. Um, so you can go to interaction.com and we put all of our announcements there. It's good to follow us on LinkedIn uh, more and more. We, you, you know, like everybody else, we're using platforms like LinkedIn to to communicate. Um, and globally, um, uh, digital realty and platform digital, um, you can you can access information about uh, about them through digitalrealty.com and learn about things like data gravity and uh, you know our data gravity index. Mm-hmm. So, but interaction.com for our business in Europe is is the the place to go. Mm-hmm. Okay, Shem as well. Thank you so much for joining me. I thought it was very insightful and there's a lot of stuff there to follow up, believe me. Um, and thank you, our viewers as well, for tuning in to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts. And don't forget to check our social channels for more content. Until next time, happy networking.